everybody. This is Dave and Eric here for the Haunted Halloween special. It is Tuesday night. It's 5 o'clock, and we have got a show for you. Things changed up a little bit across the board. We were supposed to have a guest here that was going to be about horror films, but we even have something more exciting for you today. We're going to do some, we're going to have some fun. We're going to go over uh, trick-or-treat candy. We're going to rate them, and we're going to give you some ideas on what your thoughts and feelings are. But later in the show, about 5.20 p.m., we have a special guest, which I'm very excited to share with you, but I won't yet because you got to stay tuned. At 5.20, we have a special guest on the show. Uh, so we're audio, talking about – Audio only. Audio only. I'm sorry. Yes. He'll be live on the show, audio only. Yes. We could do a follow-up too. We definitely could do a follow-up. Yeah, we could definitely do a follow-up. Definitely Have him idea. in studio. Absolutely. Get on YouTube if you haven't already. Team Powerhouse Real Estate and subscribe. If you do so, you have one more chance to win a beautiful tumbler made by Heather. Oh, we lost our scary guy over here. Uh, Monkey Shoulder is a part of our uh, show tonight, uh, Eric suggested. And uh, here we are together. <laughs> so anyway, Heather will get help us win a new tumbler for a new guest on the show who is uh, basically subscribing to our Team Powerhouse YouTube channel, our Instagram, our Facebook and if you have any questions tonight or any kind of horror stories you want to talk about or questions you have about Halloween, paranormal experiences, we want to talk about that on the air tonight too. Um, so with that being said. And please be real with it. Be real as you can. <laughs> be as real as you can, everybody. Let's have some fun here tonight. So in Connecticut, I'm not sure how much you know about this. And while we're doing this, we're going to go on and do the candy thing as well. So. We'll start with in Connecticut. Do you know there are several places that are haunted? Connecticut has more haunted homes and experiences, I guess, throughout Connecticut than I even knew about. And doing a little research over here. But before we start with that, we're going to do a candy review. I'm sorry, candy taste test. And what Eric and I both score these candies for Halloween. These are the normal candies that you've probably seen before. We're going to do a little taste test. And experience. So, which one should we start with first, Eric? Uh, <laughs> nice move. Kit Kat. Kit Kat is the first candy. Kit Kat is definitely one that um, my father was his favorite candy when we were kids. If you ever had a Kit Kat, you didn't have a Kit Kat anymore because he would always take the Kit Kat and he would um, take first bite. First so, time. am I supposed to act like this is the first time I've had a Kit Kat? Not necessarily the first time, but what's your actual, you know, taste test experience or review? And oh, I, heard, score I already first. have like a. Like an in-depth ranking of candies, so I love it. So one to ten, no, no score can be even. It's got to be a point something. Really? That's okay. the way it works. All right. Kit Kat. Mmm. Now normally, I would do Kit Kat. I would actually bite the chocolate off the top and around it, and then attack the waffle at the end. That's the way I always grew up doing it. But in the show, if I did that over here. They might think I have some kind of personal issues. <laughs> you eat the candy off of the outside. I if we check, yeah, the, the chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, bite the chocolate on the outside out, around it, get to the waffle, and then attack the waffle. <clears throat> That's not weird. <laughs> yeah. So And you did this as a kid. I did this as a kid. But you don't do it now. Because it made it last longer. Because it's kids, we didn't get to have candy that often. So okay. it made it last longer. So what do you score this Kit Kat? Anyone Kit Kat. Have, yeah. Anything about the taste, the Flavor. Now, chocolate, the chocolate is okay. Um, that's why it's probably, I think it's because of the combination of flavors. So um, the, the reason uh, some of the candies that I like um, are, are high on the list is because of the combination of flavors inside of it. So like when we get to my favorite candy, you'll know why. Because it's the, it's the two candies that, that you know, really work together, the two flavors. I agree with you 100%. Now I'm curious what your score is. Uh. Well, it's, it's a good candy, so I'm going to give it uh, an 8.5. Wow, 8.5. That's higher than I thought you were going to say. Really? Yeah, okay. I'm going to go with a 6.6. Um, I like the chocolate. It's very creamy. Six. Um, I have, in my opinion, do you eat both these already? Huh? You eat... I took one bite and put it to the side. Yeah, probably a good idea. It, does it, it kind of clashes with yeah. the Red Bull a little bit. Oh. But, uh, Jonathan, what about yours? Six. Uh, six is too low. I'm definitely doing like a 9.5. It's uh, oh. Kit Kats are one of my favorites. Nine, so Kit Kats up on, his, on wow. his, his personal chart. That's where it is. All right. Let's go to candy number two. 
We're going to go Jonathan, with, pick one for candy number two. Number two, Jonathan, want to pick a candy out. Let's do the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Oh! Okay. You hit my center spot right Which there. Which I will not be eating because I don't like those. Really? Because he does not like peanut butter. I don't. One like, of my most... I used to be allergic to it, so I grew up like not having it, and now I just don't like it. Okay, but when you did have it, how did it taste? Let me just get yeah. the wrapper. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Oh man, the smell. This one I'm just gonna go. Oh my god, I love I love peanut butter so much. Good night, for you. Hold that night. I have a jar. This is dinner, by the way. <laughs> hold on. At night, I have a jar of peanut butter that I actually go into. By the spoon, I actually take Oreos and take peanut butter and just put them on Oreos. Mm. I love peanut butter. Oh my gosh, this is wow. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. A smoothie texture. So my score on a Reese's is a ten. Mm. It's my it's it's my all time fave candy. Me too, bro. I'm all down with you in there. High five. Oh, oh, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Peanut butter, chocolate, creamy, a little yeah. bit of crunch to it on the inside, and it's the and it's weird because it's you know, um, like I, I love peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Oh, love peanut butter and mm. jelly sandwiches, but the the peanut butters and I won't mention any brands for taking anybody off, but mm. uh, the the peanut butters it, it, it doesn't match the peanut butter in, in a Reese's, and it's probably a substandard peanut butter, you know, but I love it. I don't know. I have to think that might be Skippy off the record. That could be wrong. Could be Jiffy. But the peanut butter is phenomenal. And it goes really well with a little monkey shoulder. Yeah, you got Jiffy, Peter Pan, Skippy. Mm. Yeah. I've never met a peanut butter I don't like. I don't know how oh, no, no, no. I'm saying they're good. It's just, it's the, the peanut butter in the Reese's. This peanut is, butter, is, yeah, it's unbelievable. Is, the other and if you're out there, that same taste. If you're out there and you agree with us, let us know what your opinion of the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup is. Peanut butter in a whole. If you're allergic to peanut butter or not, you love this candy. We want to know from you. Hmm. Let's go with the Milky Way. Milky Way. Milky has a – oh, there goes the – Celestial choice. Celestial. It's a, a shiny wrapper. Oh, we're talking about wrappers too? I just kind of figured I saw it. It shined in my eyes, you know. Well, you, you, Nogatuck. You don't like it. You bought you, – you own a house in Nogatuck. You bought a house with in Nogatuck. You live in Nogatuck. You're watching. You're listening. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but there's a place called the Guntown Cemetery. Established in 19, I'm sorry, 1790. Uh, if you happen to want to go and check this place Established out. Established in 1790? That's what it's saying. I guess it was created. It was started to dig and start to create bodies and dead bodies there. Okay. Established in 1790. Uh, you will know that in the evening time, especially if you go and check this out, maybe during Halloween or maybe you don't want to do this, you will find paranormal activity. You will hear a random music playing, and you may even hear children's laughter. And that is actually happening at the cemetery on a regular basis. Okay, so Halloween. there's a park across the street, so that could be the kids' noise. <laughs> it could, it could and there be. could be a house playing music down Although the street. So. It's in the middle of the night when this is happening. Oh, okay. You may hear a man crying. I'm sorry, you, a man carrying a lantern. You may see a man carrying a lantern uh, and leading a horse through the grounds. <laughs> Spooky. Uh, in addition to that, a little boy playing by the back wall and a large black dog both will vanish before your eyes if you see this happening. Did you hear about the mysterious black dog um, that's at Castle Craig, like that Castle Craig trail in Meriden? No. Have you heard? So basically, there's a rumor. There's this guy who saw this dog and it followed him around and it was very friendly. And then the second time he saw this dog, uh, it was a little aggressive. And then the third, and then he saw it a third time and it was still a little aggressive and he mysteriously died on that cliff. Uh, he fell off the cliff and they think that dog is a hellhound, which it, you see once it's good luck. You see twice it's bad luck. You see three times you die. I, I, and this is in Meriden, Connecticut. This is Meriden, Connecticut. It's got some paranormal hmm. activity. I never heard about a hellhound. It's before. not Cass Castle Craig. I think I used to own a hellhound, uh, maybe two of them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just kidding about that. Hellhound, uh, our dog was great. It was a beautiful dog. Never, ever did anything it wasn't supposed to do. Um, all right. So, Milky Way. Let's go Milky, to Milky Way. Way. All right. Chocolate outside. Hmm? Right here. Hmm? Oh, mmm, the caramel. 
Yeah. Mm, the I'm nougat. a fan of caramel. You are a fan? Milky Way mm. is great. Did you eat it? Mm. Had one yesterday. The center? Not going to lie. I didn't know you had a limit. Not going to lie. I'm just you know stockpiling what? these. For I haven't had a Milky dorm. Way in so long, and I got to tell you, this is a pretty solid candy. There's a lot of things going on in this candy bar as you're chewing into it. Eight. But eight. Huh, wow. You can't give it a, so you can't give it an even number. It's got to be a point something. 8.1. 8.1. I think a six would be for me. I'm definitely going to go with an 8.3, 8.4, 8.4. Stick. As David Portnoy would say. Let's talk about number two. In Derby, we have something called this place called the Sterling Opera House. Now, of those of you who live in Derby, you may know this place before. And if you haven't, Maybe a place you want to look at or not go to. Um, the spirit of a boy named Andy has been known to haunt the halls at the Sterling Opera House. The locals leave toys for this boy to play with. What is the Sterling Opera House? That's for those of you who want to know more in detail. Okay. Find out. I mean, you don't know. Actually, Val, I do. <laughs> Valerie a asked a question. Oh, Miss Valerie. My wife yes. and my the mother of our children... The and most the amazing you woman you'd ever meet, who's, by the way, going to be in the show. <clears throat> Sometimes I get myself into trouble with her, probably more often than I should. Okay. And anyway, yes. What's she asked if she still has to cook dinner today? Uh, He's going to be full from candy, so no, probably I, not. No, no. I definitely have to have dinner, because if I don't have dinner, what's going to happen is I'm going to have more snacks tonight. That's the problem. <laughs> than a salad. Um, yeah, I definitely need some salad and protein, uh, something. You can whip up anything quickly. It'd be great. I appreciate it, Val. Because here's the problem. I eat the sweets now, which is not normal for me because, you know, you and I both go to the gym. We work out. We take care of ourselves. We typically live a healthier lifestyle, right? No. Okay. So I try to, <laughs> right? In the meantime, I'm indulging in this. By the way, who knows what this was tonight? This was Valor's idea to do a taste test for candy. Yep. I wonder if it has to do with the dinner option for the later on. Yeah. Probably was. All right. So we're going to need broccoli after this, honestly. The Sterling House uh, and the uh, Sterling Opera House, uh, there was a hidden jail. Uh, in the basement where Houdini had performed. Which one you got next? M&M's. M&M's, the non-peanut M&M's. Yes. All right, okay. Everybody. I took the green one because the green one was rumored to be an aphrodisiac back then. Oh, yeah? I don't think I got green, apparently. Sorry, Val. Um, no green here. here. <laughs> I got orange, which and, is... Let's see. Nope, I only had the one green. The Sorry. one green. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. I'm going to take the succulent chocolate flavor. Mmm. All right. That's 7.9. Candy coated shell. 7.9. You know, I, I do enjoy M&M's. Um, it's more like a treat that you have, like, on the go. It's not something you sit there and eat and go, oh, my God, it's so good. For me, it's a, it's a handful of candy. It's a handful. Grab a handful, and, and I'm good. It's not that same feeling you get when you receive peanut butter cup. Then you eat it, like you get that goosebumps all over your body. That peanut butter, the chocolate. I wish that M and M had peanut butter inside it. I'm gonna go with. Uh, they have peanut M and M's. Peanut butter M and M's. They do. Seven point one on the M and M's. And I'm gonna have another orange one here. All right. I agree. Seven, seven point one sounds good. All right. Seven point one. All right. Uh, Jonathan, I think is next on the uh, category over here as far as can oh shoot category for chocolate. Let's go back to Naugatuck, Connecticut, where Almond Joys used to be made. Is that right? Yeah. Do you not remember? Do you not remember the uh, big factory there f a few years back? I can appreciate this. It was this demolished. As a matter of fact, Eric's favorite chocolate candy might be Almond Joy. Or not. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it's been... Some Eric torture right here. You know... Almond Joy. I love coconut. I love chocolate. I like to think chocolate... Coconut and chocolate together are a great combination. I'm surprised Pat's not paying attention because he's a big candy guy. He loves candy, chocolate, sweets. Actually, he doesn't like He's talking, but he's not asking questions. Is he talking right now but not asking questions? Is that right? He's not a big chocolate guy or a big cake dessert kind of person, speaking of Patrick. But go ahead. Okay, I'm a joy 0 0.1. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's got chocolate, so I'll give it a 0 0.2. Mm. I can't do coconut. All right, another nostalgic thing. When you were a kid growing up and went trick or treating, your parents all had their favorite candy bars, right? So, my father, if you're watching, loved Almond Joy. He loved Kit Kat. I think Almond Joy was his favorite. If you freeze an Almond Joy, by the way, mm. 
yeah. completely changes the whole game on how we enjoy it. It goes from I'm gonna give this right now. Um six three. Frozen jumps into the seven category all day long. <laughs> I'm gonna go with a seven seven on a I'm enjoy frozen. And I'm gonna what I say about the six what I say? Six three? Mm. Something like that. Yeah, six three. I like I'm gonna give this a good seven and a half. Seven and a half. I'm enjoying Frozen eight. Frozen eight. Yeah, frozen it definitely takes the cake on this one. Oh, 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 we have a special guest calling in. We have right the now. guest. Let's pass that phone over here. Minute, so. Can you hear me, Jim? I can hear you. All right. I have with us tonight, and if you haven't met him before, his stage name is Mr. Haunted. And Mr. Haunted also known as Jimmy Panita. Petanito. I apologize, Jim, on that. And I'm very excited to have you on the air with us. Jim is also known as the from the documentary Hostage to the Devil. Jim, thank you for joining us tonight over here live on the Powercast with Team Powerhouse. Wow, this is so exciting. I have a stage name. <laughs> uh, Jim, tell us a little about yourself and how you got started in paranormal activity and uh, ghosts and everything else. Let's start from the beginning. I was, a, I was a creepy little kid. Um, I uh, was always fascinated by uh, ghosts, UFOs, uh, unexplained mysteries, urban legends, all that kind of stuff. And it wasn't really cool back then. Now um, now it's a little different. But um, I collected as many books about ghosts as I could. And uh, there was one particular uh, book that I had as a, a kid that had a picture of the brown lady of Raynham Hall in it. If you're familiar with that, it's a famous uh, picture taken in like 1930 of this uh, woman descending a staircase and it looks like an apparition of a woman. And uh, I said, I want to get, I want to get a picture like that one day. So I always had that in in the, uh, uh, in my head, but um, I had an incident as a child also that uh, I was, my mother had uh, friends over and she says, "Uh, Jimmy, stay up in your room. Don't come downstairs. I'm having friends over. I was probably an embarrassment to them. No, so stay upstairs. No, no. Embarrassing. So, so anyway, I was uh, told to stay upstairs because my mother had friends over. So um, it was about seven o'clock at night, and uh, I was listening to a Mets game on the radio, and it was one of those little radios that was just looked like a looked like a box. It had two dials on it, one for volume, one for tuning. And uh, I was laying on my bed on my stomach with my you know legs bent in the air, my knees bent, and the radio started changing stations. Wow. So even as a kid, I thought, you know, it's interference, you know, it's some kind of weird interference. But then I kept doing it and I looked over and I could see the uh, tuning knob physically moving back and forth. Wow. Mm. So I start freaking out. So I, I'm more scared of my mom than the radio. <laughs> so I'm like, I, what am I going to do? You know, I go downstairs and tell her, what do we do? And then something slammed my legs down on the bed really hard. Wow. And then I, I snapped and I ran downstairs. I said, mom, mom, there's a, there's a ghost in my room. It's turning my radio back and forth. It threw my legs down. There's a ghost in my room. So, Jimmy, get back up in your bed. There's no such thing as ghosts. So I think that sent me on my quest. So uh, so that was an incident that kind of stuck out in my head growing up. Um, when I was – this is before the internet, guys. So um, there was this um, – Ed and Lorraine Warren came to speak at uh, my college, and they uh, – they were talking about the cemetery in Connecticut where the white lady supposedly roams around. What cemetery was that? <laughs> the, the, the cemetery is um, Union Cemetery in Easton, Connecticut. Okay, Union Cemetery. As I spit the candy bar out of my mouth over here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Just yes, please yeah. tell us. So, uh, so I went. So finally, uh, like I said, this, there was no internet, so I didn't know how to get there. So finally, when I got to a certain age in my early 20s, I uh, found out where it was, and to I believe that the, the woman just walks around and you get to take her picture. So I brought my camera <laughs> and I waited for an hour and I said, uh, okay, there's no, this is, this is baloney. There's no ghost here. So I took my roll of film just as a souvenir to say, okay, here's a, you know, I, I came here and I took some pictures and that's it. But when I got my pictures developed, I got some, some crazy stuff on my film. And, uh, really? and I was curious. So I was curious. So I went back again and again and i started getting some crazy stuff um not the little orb stuff i'm talking about crazy crazy stuff uh, some of them look like figures and stuff and 
Um, I, I went so much that I had actually had an album of uh, any of those cool pictures I got. I put in a photo album. How old were you? What year was this? This is probably uh, um, maybe 1990. Okay. I was probably 20-something. 20, 20 1990, which is only about 20, 30 years ago, I'm sorry. Well, with, yeah, 30 years ago, I was taking so I was, I was collecting these pictures. And um, I, just, I, I always wanted yeah. to get that picture, like the white lady. I wanted to get the, uh, the brown lady of Raynham Hall. I wanted to get that definitive ghost picture. And I just never got something that good, but I kept going and going. So if I keep going, I'll get something. So um, this this place was a hot spot for for people also trying to get pictures and uh, you know get a sighting of the white lady. So you know you go up there on a weekend and there'd be like multiple people taking pictures of the cemetery. So uh, one night um, this lady Debbie who I met up there, um, she was uh, we were talking about the pictures. She was kind of see your pictures and I showed her the album and she goes, oh, I work with Ed and Lorraine Warren. They would love to see these pictures. No kidding. So, yeah. Now, so the next Monday, I um, I went to the they had classes back then, and I went to their classes and um and they uh you know they they liked the pictures and um they still but they, they used them in their their slideshows and uh, and then I joined their their group so I worked yeah. with them for a bunch of years and I'm still I'm still in the group that they founded. Eric has a question for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, who were those two people that you just mentioned? Ed and Lorraine Warren? Yeah. That's a pretty famous people. Yeah. And you know what's funny? I get asked about them a lot. Famous and it was really funny because back back in those days, when oh. you go to a case, you come home, you know, if you come home two, three o'clock in the morning after a, a overnight at a haunted location or, you know, somebody's house, we'd um, always go to a diner on the way home. And back then, you know, people knew who they were, but it was kind of like, you know, those are they're with their weirdos. Yes. And like, we'd be sitting there having, you know, something to eat, and people would be whispering, oh, "Those are those weirdos over there." And it's like now, nowadays, people would be asking for their autograph and pictures with them, and it changed a lot. Since you know, then. you know, I've got a girl who works for me. Her name is Carla Capiello, and she loves checking out haunted houses. She loves paranormal activity. As a matter of fact, she's the one that reached out to you to get to us today. And a big shout out to Carla Capiello, spot on. Thank you, Carla. Great people on the show over here. Uh, Mr. Haunted, um, also known as Jimmy. Jimmy or James, you prefer? That doesn't matter. All right, so Jimmy, Mr. Haunted, live on the PowerCast over here uh, with Team Powerhouse. It is Halloween week, and we've got this special guest. We're talking about a guy who's the documentary that you wrote or you're involved in is The Hostage to the Devil. Um Talk about that with us over here, because if you haven't watched, this is on uh, this is on Netflix. It's been on Netflix for years. I know it, it gets a run and then it gets taken off. I'm not sure if it's on anymore, but uh, it's Hostage to the Devil. That's yeah, right. So, Jimmy, quick question. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, um, what was um, – I, I know you mentioned that first one with, that, uh, with uh, the woman in the white dress. Right. Um, what was the one that really like creeped you to your bone? That one event that you, or that one, um, you know, uh, experience that really got to you to the bone? That's a great question. Well, if you want to, um, I, um, let's see, <clears throat> I got a couple of them. How about, how about an incident? I could um, talk a little bit about what hostage to the devil's about. And then it, it's an incident that occurred during an exorcism. Oh, wow. An exorcism. Now that's okay. something you were involved to put a bit exorcisms, right? Right, but this um, I only got involved with this documentary because it's it's um, based on a, a man called um, his name was Father Malachi Martin, and he was a, um, a priest who worked at the Vatican. He was an advisor to two different popes. Um, he he wanted to leave the church after Vatican II in the sixties. He wanted to come to America and write books. So he wow. also um, had an underground uh, exorcism team, whatever you want to call it. And he became very, he became famous for writing books and his exorcisms. And uh, he, that was with the, uh, when I was going to the Warrens classes, one week Lorraine said, next week we're going to have a special guest, um, Malachi Martin. I didn't know who he was. And I asked who he was and she said, he's an exorcist. I said, well, what's cooler than that? You know, he's, this guy's coming next week. I didn't know anything about him. Um, I went to the bookstore to, uh, you know, get a book so I could have him sign it. And uh, when he came to speak to us, we usually have, you know, 10 to 15 people in the, in the class. And 
for this particular day, word must have got out because there was 50 to 60 people in this little room. And uh, he, he, he spoke to us for about an hour or so. And then at the end of the, at the end of his talk, a bunch of us were lined up to get our book signed or say hi to him. And um, he, he kept looking down the, the line at me. And I thought, you know, I said, he has magical powers. And he you made like con- some there was the eye contact. You had that kind of own feeling between you and him. There was some special connection. No, I thought he was going to yell at me about something. <laughs> like, why is he looking at me? So, uh, so I finally got up to him. And he goes, "Were you, were you sitting way back there?" And I was like, "Yes." And he goes, "You had some lights. Uh, his, you had lights flying off of you. Uh, what do you call it? Like uh, glowing, like like nobody else I've ever seen in my life." And he goes, "You're my favorite person in this room. Sit right next to me." Wow. So you know, I was sitting sit there like a little teacher's pal, all happy and everything. That I. Um, that I followed, I tried to find anything on, you see, he passed away um, years ago, but I was trying to find anything on Facebook or social media that I could follow, like, you know, a fan page or something. Right. So I found a hostage to the devil page. That was a, a, a book he wrote. Oh. So I, I, so I was following that page because it said it's a documentary. So I messaged him one day. I said, Hey, you know, how, how can I watch this documentary? And the, uh, the producer got back to me and said, I, uh, well, you know, we haven't made it yet. I said, oh, he goes, we're trying to find people that met him and have a story. I said, I said, well, I met him. I said, uh, I said, what do you, what do you need? I said, can I help you at all? And they said, well, we're trying to find these particular people that were, you know, big names that, um, that, uh, had dealings with him. And I said, well, I know all these people that you do. And I said, yeah, I said, well, their phone numbers right here. I said, what, who do you want to talk to? So, um, they were a little hesitant at first, but they didn't know what kind of, you know, documentary they were going to do, if it was negative or positive. You know, I got them the people they needed, some of the people, and um, they, they're they from Ireland, so um, so they wanted to talk to me, and I swear, I do not want to, I don't want to be on TV, I don't need to be on TV, um, they said, we want to come here, you know, we want to come and interview you also for your experience, and I said, I don't want to be on the thing, I said, I'll, I'll, I'm happy to help you get the people you need, but uh, I feel uncomfortable because it's not like he's my buddy or nothing, they said, no, your, your story is really important, so... But, you know, three or four trucks come to my driveway one day and they had all these cameras and stuff. I'm like, oh, no. And uh, so they came down here and they filmed me telling my story. And uh, and I, I was thinking back. I said, if you didn't make such a big impression on me that first day, like they might have never, ever gotten that done. We, in the, in the mid-90s, we had, a, um, we had a, a website that we chronicled some of our cases on. And uh, a producer from ABC was looking for something to do one Halloween, and they came across one of our stories that um, started off as just a regular haunted house, but um, it turned into someone we thought might have been like oppressed, um, not, not necessarily possessed, but maybe oppressed by a demon. And we and she uh, and she got an exorcism. Wow! And we we wrote that story up on our website. Can you bring um, name? Can we ask her the name of that person is? Is that Who's the name, name of the person? Yes. No, Who's, I can't say the name of the person. Okay. She had, so this woman had an exorcism then. What's exactly involved in an exorcism? Well, an exorcism is is the act of casting out, if you believe in that, uh, you know, an evil spirit or demon. And um, the, some of the signs that you might see in a person that you believe is possessed is uh, like super strength, um, speaking, speaking in language. different languages. Yeah. Um, knowledge of the unknown, which is the scariest thing, is when they know stuff they're not supposed to know. Um, aversion to holy objects. And this person here literally started as a haunted house, but then um, they showed some, the, the mother showed some footage of this woman that, anyways, this girl was 18 years old. And when she was 13, she had a bunch of incidents where um, she just had some really weird physical things happen to her. And the parents used to video it for chronically and to show doctors, like, what's wrong with my daughter? And uh, some of the videos were she'd be laying in bed and her arm would getting, was getting twisted, like, rapid rapid fire, back and forth um, for no, you know, it looks like by unseen hands. And it, uh, she actually broke hands in her, uh, broke, sorry, broke bones in her hand and wrist from these kind of things happening to her. There's videos of her getting thrown from wall to wall. And, uh, of course, they brought her to doctors and said, what's wrong with my daughter, you know? And um, this this happened when she was 13 years old. It happened for a year and then went away um, very quickly all of a sudden. So she moved into a house when she was 18. She started having haunting-type uh, phenomena at her house. 
So um, then the, her parents said, you know, do you think this has anything to do with it? So they started showing us the, the footage when she was 13. And we talked to the priest that we worked with back then. And he's like, no, uh, you know, you know, we can give her an exorcism. Um, you know, give it a shot. So that was the first exorcism I've ever been involved with. And it, and it started a whole um, started a whole thing. So uh, that's the exorcism we talked about on our website. And like I said, the ABC producer came across the story, um, asked if they could cover it for ABC primetime, which was a big show back then. And, uh, and after that episode aired, our group got calls from all over the country saying, this is happening to my son. This is happening to my husband. This is happening to my friend. And uh, so for the next year, we were going through all these different calls and trying to, weed them out, see which one might be legit, which one's, you know, um, coordinating uh, interviews, plane flights. Um, wow. And it, it got really crazy for uh, a year or so. Let me just make sure everybody knows we're talking to Jimmy, also known as Mr. Haunted. MrHaunted.com. You can go to his website, check him out over there, see more information about him over there. And we're happy to have Jimmy here on the show today talking about exorcisms, different experiences he's been through, through the years, building back to the 90s and 80s as a young adolescent and into today. Eric, you had a question. You have a question from, we had a question. Well, from I, I, I still have to answer your question. Okay. Yes. Uh, what was it? So answer, you want to answer that question first? You want to have Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, 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 so anyways, yeah. a lot of people, I, I'm not here to lecture anybody or tell you what to believe in. It's just, I tell what I, I, I tell you what I saw and what I witnessed, you know? But um, during these exorcisms, we all question whether this is a mental illness or, you know, we we always try to get everybody um, tested physically and um, by a mental health professional. Uh, But uh, a lot lot of these people that are undergoing an exorcism break, we, we, back then we had restraints for people like the, you know, the cannabis and buckle type restraints and they break out of them like it was um, (laughs) dental floss. A lot of people say, well, you know, um, you know, a, a woman could lift up a car if her child's trapped underneath. Adrenaline. But the other thing is, yes, that's because your adrenaline is, you know, your adrenaline is going. Is that if you're just sitting there quietly in a chair and a priest is saying some prayers to you, um, you're not going to get that adrenaline to break out of restraints. So that's um, a, a thing that people talk about a lot. Um, but the, the, the incident I wanted to tell you about wasn't that dramatic, except for the fact that um, one of these people that came to the church for an exorcism they were from uh, virginia virginia and the, the only thing i knew about it was this woman is coming from virginia and we'd meet at the church on wednesdays at a certain time and whatever member of the group was available um would show up so um a police officer was was part of our group and we were the only people that showed up and uh, before that we before this woman came somebody was picking her up from the airport you know, we were in church, you know, it's, it's a nice atmosphere. So the, the cop was telling me, he goes, oh, I got into this fight with my mother last night on the phone. I said some terrible things and I'm sorry. And, you know, he's in church trying to be holy and uh, he felt bad about his mom. So there was just a conversation we had, and, and, you know, before the exorcism. So the woman finally get, arrives and she's undergoing her exorcism. And uh, during the middle of the exorcism, she, she turns to the cop and says, and you, the way you talked to your mother last night, that was disgusting. And then just went back to the priest. Wow. That scared me more than any vomiting or talking <laughs> in different languages. Wow. Them knowing something that they shouldn't know. Right. So I have a question. Jonathan's got a question. Here's our, here's our guy behind, behind the scenes. Can hear you. Yeah. So how does an exorcism work if somebody isn't Christian? Oh, good question. Because David and I are Jewish. Um, we, we've had all different uh, denominations. Put it right out there, Jonathan. We had a a Jewish girl come um, from St. Louis. Um, And and it's weird. Every uh, every religion has its own form of exorcism. If you look up any religion, they all have their own form. Just bless it. Didn't know that at all. What about somebody who's like an atheist? They're in trouble. Yeah. We've had people that don't believe. I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to lecture people or prove anything to anybody. I'm just relaying my experiences. Absolutely. That's pretty cool stuff, man. I, I, I think this is so cool. Eric's another question so for Jimmy, you. Jimmy. Yeah. What do you, um, what's your impression on some of the shows that are on right now about, you know, some of these, these guys that, that go to these haunted places and, and have this equipment that picks up all these, you know, activities and voices and stuff. 
Um, I, I haven't watched those shows in years. When, when Ghost Hunters first came out, I was intrigued by it because it was, um, you know, it was bringing, um, it was bringing the paranormal to the forefront and, and putting it on a, you know, bigger stage. And I enjoyed watching that show. But you know, these, um, a lot of these shows are, um, you know, they they're kind of set up to have stuff happen and stuff. So it's hard to believe what you're seeing. Yeah, it kind of com- it kind of commercialized it, you know. You know, it's funny you mention that, Jim, because a lot of people don't believe because of those kind of things happening. It's almost like if it doesn't happen to you, how do you believe it, right? I That's mean, why I don't um, I don't try to lecture or, or beg anybody to believe anything because it's still a mystery to me. I don't know. I don't know. I knew more. I thought I knew everything when I was twenty five years old. Now that I'm older, it's like I don't know anything. This is all. It's, we're still all learning. We might not ever. You know, get the answers to this stuff in our lifetime. The answers at fifty six. That's when you know everything. Fifty six. That's when you know everything. At, at fifty six, all of it comes to like full circle. Yes, <laughs> that was my enlightenment. <laughs> I can tell you that um, you know I was once in a house. I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, I was with a client showing a house. I cannot remember the town, and I can tell you that we were in a house, and we we're in the basement of the house. Um, now, we're in a house that's vacant, first of all. Okay, we pull up to the house. The house is vacant. You walk in. We walk through. It's kind of an older home. needs a lot of updating to it. We're in the basement of the house. It's kind of dark. We're going through it. And all of a sudden, we hear, like, people walking through the, through the house, like, you know, yeah. walking through. And as we're, I'm like, oh my, I'm like, hi, we're, we're here downstairs. We want to make sure people know we're in the house. I run up the stairs to, like, let the agent know and the people are there, not to scare them. Nobody is there. Zero. I look at outside, no car, no one driving away, nothing. It was a cat. I literally, no, no, no. It was definitely footsteps because we both heard, we all heard the footsteps. It was like it was a cat. three or four people. Okay. And not to mention, I ran upstairs. I, I, I was shocked. And then I felt this cold sweat kind of feeling over my body. It was the craziest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, that was probably in the ballpark of six, seven years ago, if I had to guess. <laughs> and I'll tell you, that was the most real experience outside of college. When I was in college. College experiences? Yeah, yeah that'll rank right up there. Hold on a second. <laughs> a, a buddy Pat's house. Now, back in college, there were lots of things you did, and that's things you kind of yada, yada. And I remember one time yada, yada. saying that I believed that I saw a ghost in my buddy Pat's house. And he told me, he's like, there's actually a ghost that lives here. And it was a female ghost. It was an older woman. I'm not sure if Pat's listening to the show today or not, but it was something that I remember kind of having that experience. I thought I was crazy. Um, I think there are ghosts that are friendly, and I think there are ghosts that are there to kind of like tell you to get the hell out. Uh, that's my personal experience. I'm having an experience myself. I could have sworn I ate my Twix earlier. <laughs> Didn't I? No, you actually put your hand, you were about to open it up, and you put it back down. No, dude, I ate the Twix. I don't know. You ate the Twix. You well, I'm right going to watch it on the video. I don't see an empty package of Twix. Dude, there. did we swap Twix or something? Jimmy, I apologize. Me out. Eric's having a little bit of a paranormal experience himself right now over here. Um, that's really this cool stuff. sponsored by... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A caramel shortbread, chocolate and shoulder and, and monkey shoulder. And monkey shoulder. We we have a little bourbon on the show as we like to have a little bit of you know We're not drinking it, of course. We're just looking at it. Um Jimmy, we'd love to have you in the show. I think you'd be a lot of fun to have here. Um yeah, it would. more details as to different experiences and, and you know what I'd love to get those photos from you uh to put on the app for people to see and talk more about that as well. How does that sound to you? Uh yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm too excited. <laughs> too excited. He's like, yeah, sure. Since you asked me right now, yeah. <laughs> put me on the spot. Sure. You got a couple minutes. I got a footstep story for you. Yeah, tell us, please. We definitely have a couple minutes. We're investigating a house in Trumbull, which we still are investigating. It's a historic home. Oh yeah. And the, the owner's um, rebuilding it. What's the address? So, <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to find. Says the realtor. We were, we were down the basement. Remember, they have no power. They're uh, restoring it. And a bunch of us were in the basement investigating, and it turned dark while we were there. So when we come out, we're all, we're all coming with you know suitcases of our equipment and stuff. And there's a police car uh, blocking our cars in all over the road. I guess a neighbor called and said that they could see you know flashlights in the basement. So we come out, and the um, the cops are like, "What are you guys doing in there?" And we try to explain to them that we're hunting for ghosts. So uh, so the so all of a sudden every cop had a story. We're like, oh my god. They said, we, I just came from a house where the homeowners were complaining that there's 
footsteps running around their home and there's somebody in their house. He goes, I went to their house. He goes, I heard the footsteps. I go up there. Their whole, their whole house is clear. He goes, there's no, nobody there. And, you know, uh, so everybody has a story. That's very interesting. Can I ask one more quick question? Yep. Have you ever what been atta- been like attacked by a spirit or like hurt by a ghost physically? You know, I always bragged because a lot of people think it's a, a badge of honor to get scratched or something. Oh. And I always said I never got um, attacked or anything by anybody. But we were in this uh, cemetery and we were we were alive back uh, they had periscope and we were doing a live uh, a live feed from um, this, um, it was Guntown Cemetery in Naugatuck. And um, I was bragging about... Hold on a minute. I mentioned Guntown Cemetery in the beginning of the show. Guntown Cemetery established in 1790. Go ahead. Yes. Good job. (laughs) Um, So we were at Guntown Cemetery and I was was bragging about, you know, I never got scratched. You know, I was kind of happy about that because everybody brags about it. And as as I'm talking, they're like, Jim, you're getting scratched right now. <laughs> and they have it on video somewhere. Uh, like, scratches appeared on my neck as I was saying this thing. Er- Eric's got an interesting story also. You actually were talking about this beforehand. He probably wasn't ready to bring it up, but that automatically needs to be brought up now. So, Jimmy, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, um, took a family trip to um, Gettysburg uh-huh. some years back. Um, I think my son was around... I'd say, I want to say he was around seven or eight years old. This son, Dylan. And um, we went into this uh, haunted uh, orphanage. And we went down into the basement where the lady who ran the orphanage had, uh, had supposedly put some kids when they were bad or something like that. I was re- like a stone, fo- you know, stone uh, foundation, stone uh, uh, sections of the, of the basement. So um, we finished the tour. Um, and then we, we get up back into like the main level of the house uh, of the orphanage. And, um, you know, we get into a lit area and this lady um, yells out, oh, my God, your son was touched. And I look over at my son and he had uh, three like very thin finger marks on his face like he had been slapped. Uh-huh. And everybody looked and we were like, oh, my gosh, look, at he's been touched or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then um, literally within 30 seconds, the marks were gone. It's like, it's like yeah. they were never there. That's the way it happens. Those kind of things, uh, they disappear very quickly usually. So they said, oh, he's special. <laughs> That's really special. Yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. You know, um, I definitely, uh, and, and Eric, listen, I think many people who have, it's a conversation or a story you, you don't really talk about very often. And see if they're comfortable with the right people in that conversation to kind of bring it up. Because otherwise, if you say something that happened to you, people look at you like, yeah, right. Yeah. You know, and or they are just kind of make you feel like you're the complete, you know, wackadoo, if you will. Um, but, you know, what? we're going to get more deep into this paranormal activity, I think, on a regular basis. And maybe once a month have some kind of a talk about this kind of stuff. Because right. more and more people have interest in knowing more about it. Um Anybody else from the outside world looking to ask questions? No. All right, Val, I'm definitely going to have dinner today. By the way, Jimmy, um, you're going to be joining us here for our next taste test for a candy bar that Eric's up to choose, I think, it's his turn. Um, the you're... giant almond joy. Oh, no. York peppermint patty. All right, Jimmy. You're joining us on a York peppermint patty. Jimmy, taste. how do you feel about York peppermint patty? They're a refreshing... <laughs> They're a refreshing treat. Yes. Mmm. You know, some people need a candy. They shove it in their mouth. Let me go for it like Eric does. I typically take a bite first. Get the senses going. You get a bum rush of the chocolate senses. I like peppermint patty and um, and junior mints. It's my favorite. Um, really? Theater theater chocolate. Mm-hmm. There's junior mints or York peppermint patties. Or and the snow what, caps. Snow caps and raisinettes. Yeah. Mix it all in the popcorn bowl. Yeah, you're in the bathroom later on. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. We have now at the best part of our show, the final part of our show, is the winner take all for the Tumblr. Those of you who are watching us. Jimmy's going to get one, right? Jimmy, when you come on the show, we're going to have a special Tumblr for you as a gift for being part of our show today. It's a team powerhouse. 
tumbler. It's beautiful. It's black. It's got silver writing on it. Our logo, the whole thing. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. Look forward to that. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> cool. Pretty exciting. It's great for cold. It's great for warm. Great for alcohol. Great for wine. Great for anything you want to put in there. Um, but we want to thank Heather from her company that it's true. Like, and I apologize, Heather. Um, Always. Creative Crafts. Yeah. Yeah, John. Heather Creative Crafts. John, that saves the day. Boom. Uh, Heather Creative Crafts. She makes these beautiful tumblers for us and our team. And we're going to give one out every week as we do to a lucky winner. So, John, let's hit that wheel and see who's going to win today. And also the person who uh, won last week needs to get back to me. All right. Um, it's an. I think this is an Instagram user. Um, say say like like cack. Not right. letters. All right. So yeah. first of all, they can see it live. Sally Caracaselli. Sally Caracaselli, maybe. Beautiful. All right. If your name is Sally, if that's your real name, I'm not sure. Maybe just a, it's a code name for your Instagram. Sally. Uh, we'd Sally. love to tell you congratulations, number one. Thank you for being a part of our show. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to getting you this beautiful tumbler. Thank you so much again for coming on the show. This is surprising us all today, Jimmy. Mr. Haunted. Go to MrHaunted.com. Check out Jimmy. Uh, we're going to have him on the show. YouTube, Team Powerhouse Real Estate. TikTok. Instagram. Please friend us. Subscribe. Please join us here. We look forward to having you on the air. Look forward to having you on the show and having some fun with you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.